Come on, give me some skin. <laughs> I love it, I love it. I can, I can leave that up to interpretation or I can tell you what it is. Alright, go on, what is it? Say, um, it's a lamb's willy. That's a lamb's willy. And I'll tell you what, my fees are very reasonable. Are they? Yes, Look, yeah. I've got a fiver for that, hang on a minute. <laughs> what should people do if they visit Malden? Go on. Well, just come, come on, Leah. It's beautiful down here, down the Queen's Head, sit out here. Yeah. Have a nice drink, something to eat. <laughs> Have a nice drink, Have something to eat. Hours and pears, darling. Come on. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of A Day in the UK. And today, we are back in Malden in Essex. If you haven't seen my first video on Malden on Moot Hall, which was the seat of local government for over 400 years, absolutely fascinating. You've got to check it out. Just to let you know before we begin as well, that the local sponsor, the local business sponsoring this video today is Woof & Co. And we're going to check them out later. Fantastic little shop for doggies. Right, so here's a few cheeky little facts about Malden before we get stuck in. Sam Ryder, who came second, let's be honest, he was first, in the Eurovision Song Contest a couple of weeks ago, is a local lad. Every year they have a mud race on the promenade. It's also home to Molden Salt, the world famous Molden Salt. It dates back to 930, roughly 913 AD and is also home to the Battle of Molden where the Vikings raided back in the 10th century. Now before we get stuck into Molden, the people, the history, we've got something right here this is the old Malden station front, the railway station front. Obviously a lot of those lines closed by Beecham. Let's chat about this before we get on our way, shall we? Malden station opened in 1848. In between that time, it was renamed Malden East in 1889 and Malden East and Haybridge in 1907. It closed 118 years later in 1966 when Dr. Richard Beeching the chairman of the British Railways Board wielded his axe closing thousands of miles of railway and stations in the 1960s, including Malden. Malden East and Haybridge was a terminus station located at the end of two branch lines from Whittam and Woodham Ferrers via Malden West. This beautiful Grade 2 listed facade is now office space but was once a busy active station house bustling with travellers. It's also been a restaurant and bar now interestingly, one barman talks of it being haunted by a white lady. Well I don't know about that, but I do love an old station house. And you'll know that if you've seen my travel video on Braintree, which includes the old station and platform at Rain Station. So I wonder what time has in store for this beautiful old station in the future. Right, time to move on. Let's make our way around the town. Let's do it. Right, so I'm walking along Full Bridge Road. Pretty busy traffic leads on to Market Hill. I'll show you. Look at this, this is lovely, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This is the River Chelmer. If I look across here, there's the other side. And now we're coming into uh, Market Hill. Okay, what do we have here? The United Reformed Church. Let's check it out, shall we? Absolutely beautiful. Let's check it out, see if we've got any plaques. I can see a blue plaque already, actually. I can see a blue plaque. Let's check it out. Annika Rice style, come on. We got here. Look at this. It says here, Joseph Billio, born in 1668. The fervour of his preaching in the 1696 meeting house on this site led to the phrase "like Billio." Like Billio. Has any, anyone ever heard that phrase? Obviously, means this guy was a passionate talker who went on and on and on and probably ranted for a long time. Like Billio. I love that. What a little gem. Let's see where else we can find, shall we? So we've arrived at St. Peter's Churchyard and that is home to the Thomas Plume Library and the Malden Heritage Centre. Let's check it out, shall we? So Thomas Plume was an English churchman and philanthropist and he was the founder of this library in Malden. Now, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to film in this library, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the library right now. Classed as one of Essex's greatest treasures, Thomas Plume's library was founded in 1704 under the terms of the will of Dr. Thomas Plume, vicar of Greenwich and archdeacon of Rochester, who had been born in Molden in 1630. He bequeathed to his native town a collection of 8,100 books and pamphlets to be kept in the building, which he had constructed here from the ruins of the old St. Peter's Church. As you push open the door, you enter a time capsule 
a perfectly preserved 17th century library, the walls clad with old oak panelling, the shelves lined with beautifully maintained leather bound books. This is the little jewel which the Reverend Dr Thomas Plume gave to the town of Malden when he died in 1704. For a comprehensive insight into Thomas Plume, check out the thethomasplumeslibrary.co.uk. Fascinating stuff. Well, around the corner from the Thomas Plume Library is the Malden Centre. So let's check it out, shall we? Right, everyone, we have been able to gain exclusive access into the Muldoon Centre. The Muldoon, that's how it's pronounced, apparently, here in Malden. And we're going to have a little chat to Jill over here. Muldoon, what does it mean, Jill? It means, in Saxon, cross on hill. Oh, right, OK. And I think that that's evolved over the years into Malden. Right, gotcha. This is the embroidery, and how long is this embroidery? Um, it's 42 foot in length, yeah. and it's just 26 um, inches wide, Okay. Um, but uh, each panel has something to tell you about the history of Malden. Beautiful, isn't it? Look at this. It's absolutely amazing. Tell us about this, Jill, over here. I can see this, this guy here waving his sword. Who's that? Right, that's Brithnos, the elderman. Because it tells a story, doesn't it? Oh, very much so. The whole idea of doing this was for the millennium in 1991. Oh, I see. Of the battle, the battle being in August 991. Um, wow, okay. And it was between yeah. uh, the Saxons and, yeah. and the Vikings. This okay. is Brithnos, uh, and this is Olaf Tryggvason, who was the leader of the Vikings. And how long did that battle go on for? Well, we're not sure, because we can only tell from the poem, The Battle of Morden, exactly yeah. what happened. Yeah. Uh, but it's said that 93 longships came up the, ri up the river Blackwater yeah. and uh, landed on Northy Island. Yep. And uh, the battle took place uh, on the land side. OK. It, yeah. It, and um, because Brithnoth was so tall... And How tall was he? Well, it's said that he was six foot seven or, or six foot nine. Um, they tested his bones, which are still in it. You're joking. Yep. And this is him over here. So yep. if we go over here, this is a life-size replica, right, of, of Brithnoth. It, it is. It, it, it looks quite old. Well, he was over 60, we think. Was he? Yeah. And um, Six foot nine as well. Well, exactly. I mean, it's absolutely extraordinary because most people have been much shorter than that and wouldn't have lived so long. So, Unbelievable. Yeah. But he was killed in the battle. He was. And that is chartered over here, isn't it? It is. Okay, so as we go on, right, so this, does this depict part of the battle? Sorry about the reflection, everyone, but this yeah. is, is this the death of Brithnoth? It, it is, because he would Gruesome. have been one of only a few people on a horse. Yeah. Um, I think because of his height, um, he would have been uh, a sitting duck, as they say. Of uh, course, uh, absolutely. And so yeah. all the Vikings would have uh, got turned to him. And so uh, it is said that they slashed his hand. Uh, he managed to kill somebody. Then he was slashed in his side. And because he lost so much blood, uh, he uh, died on the battlefield. Right, uh, right. And they think that the um, Vikings cut his head off. Right. And probably took it round on a, on a spike. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Show trophy of war. Lovely. Um, and then, um, uh, because he left his wife, Eflid. Uh, Eflid? Yes. She there was, she is. She was an embroideress, so I think that was the inspiration for doing the embroidery. Oh, right, um, okay. But he left her at Ely Cathedral. Okay. Where, where he'd left money for his uh, funeral. So the monks came and collected him, found yeah. his special sword, couldn't find his head. Right. So uh, they made a wax effigy um, so that it was a complete body to take home for burial. How strange. Yeah. Well, everyone, there's loads to the Muldoon Centre, so get yourself down here um, because there's, there's so much I can't show you. To be honest with you, I'd be here all day. So you've got the Visitor Information Centre. You've got loads of exhibitions that take place here as well. But, Jill, really appreciate that. Thank you so much for taking me around. The, the embroidery, because that is just so incredible, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm delighted that you've come in to see what we've got, because we do feel we've got an awful lot uh, to share with visitors. Bless you. Thank you so much, Jill. You take care, yeah? Thank you. Cheers, then. Bye-bye. Fascinating stuff. Imagine a six-foot-nine warrior with a sword or an axe coming at you. Sod that for a game of soldiers. Anyway, let's have a little check around the town, see what else we can find, shall we? 
Okay, so here we are on the high street. As you can see there on the right, we've got Moot Hall. Check that out, that's in the last video. Now, I've been to Malden a good few times, and I'll tell you what, one of the most famous residents of Malden, there's a plaque around the corner pertaining to him. I've got to take you there. It's the fat man of Malden. Hello, you all right? <laughs> Following these ladies here. Do your hair, that's it. We're all going to go down King's Courtyard. I'm going to follow these ladies, because you know about the fat man of Malden? No. No? Right, come over here. Check what? this out, right? Because I've been here before. The fat man of Malden, right? Edward Bright, the fat man of Malden, right? What well, can you... There he is, there he is. And he says here, Malden's famous fat grocer, supposed to be the biggest and weightiest man in the world, died age 29 the 10th of November 1750, weighing 44 stone, right? Lived 1721 to 1750, ladies. He says here, on the 1st of December 1750, a wager took place at the Black Ball, which doesn't exist anymore, right, on the High Street, when seven Molden men were buttoned into his enormous waistcoat. Them, yeah. This is him, look at this, <laughs> this cast, this amazing cast here, the depiction of this, right? And it says here, listen to this, this is even better. On the 28th of January 1751, a wager was decided at the King's Head for ham, chickens, and some gallons of wine when the following nine men fit into his waistcoat, right? <laughs> what do you reckon of that? Did you know, are you locals? Are we gonna charge? Are you gonna 100 quid each. 100 quid each. <laughs> Go on, give me some skin. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Thank Cheers, you. ladies. Cheers. <laughs> Fantastic stuff, I love it. Isn't that incredible? But let's, let's talk a little bit more about Edward Bright, shall we? Firstly, thanks to the research of Lynn Raymond, this is what we know about Edward Bright. Edward Bright was born on the 1st of March 1721 in Great Waltham. Bright was a tallow chandler and grocer. A tallow chandler is specifically a person who makes and sells candles. Historically, candles were mostly made from tallow, a form of animal fat that provided an inexpensive way for people to light their homes at night. Now the site of the candle workshop is now occupied by Malden Town Hall, seen here. He was a tenant of a house and shop where 57 and 59 High Street now stand as a shoe repair shop and beauty salon. In the early 1740s, he became a freeman of the borough of Malden and married a young Enfield woman named Mary and together they had six children. The fat man's son, Edward Ted Bright, grocer and manufacturer of Malden Salt, built in 1770 the property now known as Church House. Now, it's a fantastic cafe called Mrs. Salisbury's off of Bright's Path, seen here. I'll tell you what, a cracking place to get some lunch. The fat man died of either typhoid or miliary fever on the 10th of November, 1750. His coffin was three feet six inches over the shoulders, six feet seven inches long, and three feet deep. Now, he was so fat that two days after his death, a way had to be cut through the wall and staircase of his home to let his corpse down into the shop. Right, I'm taking you to the final resting place of the fat man of Malden, and that is the parish church of All Saints with St. Peter. And here it is. Edward Bright was buried here in All Saints Church, 12th of November, 1750 age only 29 right that's what we found out but he required a special coffin because he was that big church records show that a way was cut through the wall and staircase to let it down into the shop it was drawn upon a carriage to the church and slid upon rollers to the vault made of brickwork and interred by the help of a triangle and pulley what about that there's so much more to Edward Bright and his family history in Malden, so if you fancy hearing more, Lynn Raymond has a fantastic YouTube video published called Edward Bright, Malden's Famous Fat Man and His Family. Go and watch it, give us some love. Before we leave All Saints Church, I've got to show you something else amazing. Check this out, right? This here is called the Washington Window. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? But if you look at the bottom of this stained glass window, it reads, This window is erected to the memory of Reverend Lawrence Washington, rector of Purley and great-great-grandfather of George Washington, the first president of the United States of America. How about that? Buried in this churchyard 
January, I think it's 1652. This memorial is the gift of the citizens of Malden, Massachusetts, didn't even know it existed, and a committee of the, is that Soulgrave Institution USA, whose names are recorded in a book deposited in the archives of this church. Anyone else know about that? Oh, I didn't know about that. I've been in this church many, many times. Really interesting, really interesting. Right, it's time to leave the church and show you a bit more of Malden. Cue the montage. Do you love dogs? Are you a dog person? It's time for the sponsor. That is Woof & Co here on the high street. Let's check them out, shall we? Hey, Woof & Co, how are we doing, ladies? Good, Excellent. You are? I'm Beth. Beth and? Sky. Beautiful names, lovely. Girls, tell us about Woof & Co. What's so, going on? Woof & Co is a little dog boutique on okay. London High Street. Yep. We sell high quality treats, high quality food. Yep. We believe like dogs should eat high quality. We sell a lot of unique stuff as well, so we're not like you. Show us. Pets. Come on. Come so, on. Show. What's going got, on? So we've got some deer legs. Deer legs. Yep. I've never seen that in a dog shop before. Yep. Ever. Dog Do they bite right through that, or is that they, just a sort of a bone like, situation? Yeah, they'll like just gnaw on it. Gnaw on it. Beautiful. Yeah. And we've got all the bits and pieces, treats you can put in a bag there, like that. Doggy beer. Yeah. What is this? So Tweaks. That, yeah, I can, I can leave that up to interpretation or I can tell you what it is. All right, go on, what is it? Say, um, it's a lamb's willy. That's a lamb's willy? That is a lamb's willy. Oh look, this one's sticking up as well. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Do they eat the whole thing? Yeah, they, they will eat. Do they? They scoff yeah. the whole lot? Yeah. We've got leads over here, everyone, ladies and gents. We've got beds. Mm -hmm. what, have we got in, what have we got in the corner over here? We've got dog pyjamas. Dog pyjamas. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Doggy ice cream. Yeah. You've got a lot, haven't you? <laughs> Right, Beth, have we got any offers? Yes, Go we on. have. So if you come in the store yep. and you quote a day in the UK, yep. you can spend, if you spend five pounds, yep. you can get a little treat bag. So you've got like sausage bites, biscuits, meat strips and stuff in there. Amazing. Yep. Go on, what else and have you got? And online yep. at www.woofandcomolden.co.uk, yep. if you type in a day in the UK, you can get 10% off. 10% off. Guys, if you want to do that, you can click in the corner there. That is a link to Woof & Co's website. Fill your boots with that 10% offer. Ladies, it's been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. you take care, yeah? You too. I'm off. See you later. See you later. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Okay, we're going to pull off the high street now onto Hyde Quay and Promenade Park. Right, everyone, we've made it onto the quay. You've got the England Coast Path, town centre that way, Promenade Park to the right, and the Coast Path. Here we are. Look at this. How you going, gents? You all right? What's your name, bud? Uh, hello, I'm Paul. Paul, nice to meet you, my friend. Nice to meet you. Do you run this? It looks like an excursion. You can hire the boat here. Yeah, we, we run. We've got three barges, these three here, so. Oh, beautiful. They'll, they'll be going out this afternoon. Where do they go out to? I know there's a couple of islands you do tours yeah, to, yeah? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, down to Ozzy Island. Oh, yeah. Um, it's the furthest one. The first one's Northy Island. We go past there and then go down to Ozzy. What is the. Wasn't that supposed to be in the Battle of Malden, one of those? Was it Northy yeah, Island? Yeah, Northy, but that's a bit debatable, I think. It yeah, yeah. Possibly the battle was fought somewhere up, further up the river. No one quite knows, because no. it actually came from a no. poem, didn't it? It did, and someone looking at an Ordnance Survey map in the 1920s. And oh, really? <laughs> and this would have been uh, a fishing town back in the day? Yep. Well, it was a port. Okay. 
and people made their living from fishing, wild fowling on the waterfront, there were yeah. shipwrights here. So a lot of the chaps that worked here had several jobs, you know, they'd be shipwrights, yeah. and fishermen in the winter, and um, yeah, so you know, they'd make their living on, on the river. Oh mate, listen, appreciate you stopping and have a little chat for me. Right. Brilliant stuff. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of yeah. your coffee there, mate. Thank you. You <laughs> All the day. best. Yeah. Thank you very much, mate. You, Cheers then. What a lovely chap. What else have we got here? Hello. Oh, yeah. You're right. So we got here is the barge tea rooms, which is nice. So you can sit out over there on the deck, have a cream tea, a scone. How you doing? You're right. Yes. Are you locals? Yes, yeah, so uh, are. You are. Yeah. Well, not locals. Great Lees. So. Where's Great Lees? About 10 miles that yeah. way. About 10 miles. Are you in the party as well, are you? Yeah, yeah. Yes. You folks have actually been on these boat trips, haven't you? Certainly have, yes. What's it like? What's it like? Fantastic. Yeah. Amazing. Especially, especially on the uh, sailing boat, Thames yeah. sailing barge. Example yeah. here. Yeah, you've got the sailing vision. barges there as well. Yeah. Yeah, they're oh, unique, we... you know, they're dying breeds. It's something so, keeping these going on the river. These are the uh, the heavy goods vehicles of uh, the uh, late 1800s and early 90s. Oh yeah. At yeah. their peak, there were 2,000 of these barges really? sailing up and down the east coast, round into London, down round the south coast, carrying coal, bricks, cement. Really? Why did, why did they settle here then? Do you think? Uh, well, the reason for being here is because the, a lot of wheat was grown in this area. Yeah. And the barges, they said that you could sail a barge on the morning dew. So you could take the barge right up the top of a creek. Yeah. And the farm labourers could load all the uh, wheat into the barge. And then when the tide came in, the barge would sail off and it would sail up to London. They yeah. would supply the, uh, the wheat for um, yeah. horses yeah. for the London Omnibus Company. And they'd bring back the manure from the uh, London streets and take them back to the farms around Essex, dig it all out, put it on the fields and then take another load of straw or wheat or whatever it was they were going to take up to London or wherever else. Unbelievable, the people that you meet, <laughs> the information that you get. I mean, I did this man, are you, are you a barge historian? No. I mean, that's unbelievable. No, I do lots of talks and he things. He's a local. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, know, could, yeah. I could he see, does he, does, see he yeah. sails a lot. Oh, okay. He's a local. Yeah, yeah. He knows a lot what's going on. <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is, this is really too much. I'll tell, yeah. you, you know. I'll tell you what, my fees are very reasonable. Are they? Yes. Look, yeah. I've got a fiver for that. Hang on a minute. <laughs> lovely to meet you guys. Yeah, lovely to meet really you. lovely to meet you. Yeah, Thank you so much. Keep going. Don't fall off. Enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, cheers. The tide's coming in. Watch it if you're going out in the mud. Thanks, mate. All the best. Barges, barges, barges. Stunning. Look at the scenery. Look at that. Look at this old beast. How do you find Malden? What's, what's your feeling about Malden these oh days? Oh goodness, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah? I mean, this promenade, there's so much to offer, especially when you've got young children. You've got the splash park, you've yeah. got the pirate ship, you've got everything, haven't you? And then yeah. every summer, Carter's Fair arrives. The atmosphere is amazing. I was going to say, it's a beautiful day. Yeah. Absolutely packed. Yeah. And you've got you got the fair going on here. Mm. Everyone's out chilling out in the sunshine. Yeah. You're eating your oysters. We've got oysters. Yeah. We've got you've got prosecco. some prosecco. You're yeah. living the life, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. Having it's not a bad day. Yeah. Right, the first thing we need to do before we mingle any further or check out what else is here is to go to the Molden Museum before it shuts. Let's check it out. A massive cog outside the front. Hello. Hello there. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah fine. <laughs> Have you got any anything major in the museum that you feel that you know someone like me turning up should see? Because obviously there's so much to Malden, isn't there? There is, what? there is indeed. Excellent model made many years ago of, of the old Malden railway station, sadly gone. But there are... There oh, is so this is a model of the old Malden railway station? This, this building is still there. By yes. What is now Aldi? Now I started there. Yeah. That's where oh, I started. Right, right, right. I started my journey there. And this is beautiful, isn't it? You've got the, the, the Malden East sign. Malden East. You've got all these incredible photographs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the last ticket for the last train. You're joking, yeah? Look at that. What's going on here? A little bit of wartime, wartime memorabilia. 1950s, 1940s, 1950s room. Lovely. Slightly older than that, the Victorian scullery. Victorian scullery. What's lovely about this is, is that it's you've got actual rooms dedicated to certain periods of time where yeah. you can actually walk in, yeah. which is it's really nice, isn't it? Well, the, the building itself is an old Victorian park keeper's Oh, lodge. is that right? Yeah. 
So the building itself is an old Victorian park keeper's lodge. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this this was the the, the keeper of the promenade park. Yeah. Built for him. This is the Victorian room, fairly self-evident. There we go. We she's have, having a good time, isn't she? She is. She's, she's having a lovely time. She's one of these <laughs> Victorian ladies. You may have heard of the Essex Serpents. No, go on. Essex Serpent book, which is now on Apple Apple TV Plus. No, yeah, never heard of it. What's that? Claire Danes. No, no, never, never heard of it. What's that? The Essex Serpent. No. Oh, it's all about this mythical character, or mythical being that lives right. in the in the Morden Marshes. So that program's about Morden. It's it's a it's filmed parts of it are filmed in Morden. It's oh, about no. a fictitious town that's slightly up. Oh, I see. A fictitious village. Got it. Got uh, it. Got it. But this was a Victorian lady who was interested in fossil hunting and ammonites. Beautiful. Are they real? They are real. Okay. I can't get out of the way of that. It's oh, hello. Look at this. So this is Edward Bright's waistcoat. I've been hearing a lot about Edward Bright. He's all over the place. We've, we've learnt lots. And here we are. That is his actual waistcoat. Uh, to be fair, it's a facsimile. It's not the real thing. Oh, it's not, it's not the real one? No. no oh. the, the, real, the real one would be 400 years old. That's fair enough. So, but these are the actual the, dimensions. The actual dimensions. Just to put it in a context, could you stand next to that there? Sure. And we right. occasionally, oh when God. we have school parties, we will have the kids wrapped up in it. It's beautiful. And, you and you've got a little plaque there. Is that, so there he is there as well. And yep. you've got a little plaque yes. over here. The seven men. It looks like a, a you know, a seven-headed man, doesn't it? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> So this is the Sads room? Yes. So what was Sads? Sad were, they were joiners, carpenters. Yeah. Um, they also made, during the war, yeah. motor torpedo boats. Which right. Which we have a model of here. Okay. Um, so was that, was that local then? Was that a local company to, to Malden? Absolutely local, down on, down on the quay. Opposite where the, the barges are moored. Okay. There's a quay on, just a little further along, there's some flour mills and the old Sads. Um, buildings used to be there. Oh, um, really? It's they, a very significant place. Yes, yes. Sands was a was a major employer in in the town. There were two two main employers. Sands, which we have a lot of stuff. Yep. On and Bentles, who made agricultural machinery. Okay. Okay. Um, they they in fact made cars very early on um, in in their life. Um, but it was mainly agricultural machines, and their building is still there. The, the Sands building is gone. Right, I am off. Keith, thank you very much, my friend. You're quite welcome. Keith loves giving tours, doesn't you, mate? I do, I do. <laughs> you do. It's a short tour, isn't it? Because I'm going to get off and check out the rest of Promenade Park. Thank you very much, bud. Okay. All the best. Take care. Found these lovely ladies. Oh, How you doing? You're right. You too. <laughs> <laughs> We're visiting you, today. Hiya. Oh yeah, you're yeah. visiting. I'm visiting my friend Leah. Yeah. Hello, Leah. Hello. How you doing? You're right. Yeah. And fine. you're from where? I'm from Callington. East Callington. Callington. <laughs> <laughs> You're loving it, are you? Yeah. Do you like a bit of Malden? I think it's absolutely beautiful, Dan. It's yeah. beautiful, isn't it? We've just been around all the um, steam trains. Buzzing. And, yeah, it's lovely. Absolutely People buzzing. People are beautiful, Dan. Yeah. People are beautiful. Lovely. It's indeed. Lovely what, should, what should people do if they visit Malden? Go on. Well, just come, come on, Leah. It's beautiful, Dan, here, down the Queen's Head, yeah, sit out here. Yeah. Have a nice drink, something to eat. <laughs> Have a nice drink, something to eat, apples and pears, darling. Come on. 
We're selling his mug. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah. That that sums it up. Nice drink, you know. Get down there, have a pie and mash. <laughs> Yeah, my yeah. mother's bringing us fat pie mash. Yeah, we've got pie mash afternoon. You're joking. Yeah, have, have a pie mash. My mother's bringing it back from Chris yeah. Street. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Girls, enjoy the rest what, of your, your day. We're going to have a look for A day you. in the UK. A day in the UK. Oh, we'll my we'll name's Adam Day, so it's a little spin on the name. Look, there we're you go. We're going to get you chucked off. Yeah. I'm going to get loads of See you later, girls. All the best, yeah? Cheers. What about that? It's absolutely buzzing over there at Promenade Park. Stunning here at Hive Key. And that is me for the day. Malden's been epic. Amazing history, really friendly people, and I've loved it. Sun's out, it's beautiful. So I'm off, and I shall see you in the next video. Take care, cheers.